Hello everyone this is part 11 of what if Naruto had a proper teacher, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to see more comment down below, now let's start the intro. Shortly after they left the gates of Kumogakur Kakashi gave the signal to Naruto and Sakura. Five minutes later Naruto used Cage Bunshin to create 40 clones. 30 of them immediately used a henge to appear like his comrades. Now there were a total of one original and 10 copies of each member of Team 7. The Iwa Shinobi tensed ready to fight if necessary. The groups of Team 7 clones weren't interested in fighting, instead they dispersed in every direction exception towards the village they had just left. Kitsuki and the other Iwa Jonan kept a firm eye on the original group. One of the Jonan with him said, you think you can fool us like that Kanoa scum. All of you move differently and your chakra is different. This might fool Jenan or Chunan but it would never fool us. Kitsuki narrowed his eyes and then popped them open. Kai, the subtle genjutsu Sakura had weaved had dissolved and Kitsuki realized they were with clones not the real Team 7. The Jonan who had spoken cursed at having been tricked. None of the Iwa Shinobi were sensory types however they were Jonan which meant they were very observant. The idea of all of them falling prey to even a very subtle genjutsu that only changed things slightly was dangerous. Kitsuki then realized exactly when the genjutsu had struck. The genjutsu was used when the Namikas made his shadow clones. The influx of chakra all around us helped hide the presence of the genjutsu chakra within our own network. Kitsuki admired the level of coordination that had taken. Kitsuki made a pair of mud clones and shouted to his comrades, spread out and find them, they aren't going to fight us in lighting country but we need to find the real ones. One of the Jonan sent a specific series of pulses of chakra into the ground that Kitsuki's Chunan aid still in Kumo would sense and then relay information by hawk back to Awagakur with an update. Team 7 had successfully evaded their immediate tails. They moved at moderate speed toward the land of frost. The Iwa contingent was more than just the four Jonan they had encountered and they weren't sure exactly where they were. The dignitaries from the land of earth had bodyguards that would be predominantly made up of Chunan. While the nobles may be loath to give up their hired guards if it meant helping their nation end the Namika's line, most would be willing. And even if not Kakashi knew there would be Iwa observers at the border. Once they were in the land of frost the Rakage's demands would be null. And once outside of the land of lightning team 7 could proceed in thinning out the Iwa forces. Asterisk break asterisk. Sunid squad had received word a massive army was on the move from Awagakur. Sunid relayed the information guy, Shibi and Tenzo. Shibi processed the information and frowned, the number of shinobi being sent is concerning. Shikaku believed they would send their hunter nin, perhaps a few of their more powerful elite jonin, not an army. Sunid pursed her lips, that's why we are here to act as backup. We don't have any intelligence on who they are sending. For all we knew the Chuchikage himself could be going with them. Sunid didn't think that was likely. It was rare for a cage to personally involve themselves in battle. Too many had fallen on the field and it was very disruptive to the village. Typically it was only done in the most extreme situations either on the defensive or to fully complete one village's victory over another. Sunid asked, unlikely but what is your point? We should call off the mission. Tell Team 7 to go to ground and hide. Avoid engaging the enemy and send for reinforcements. Sunid shook her head, Kanoa has yet to recover and we cannot escalate. If Team 7 hides and we bring an army Iwa will bring even more forces and we will turn this land into a battleground of ever increasing size. No we will stick to the plan. Kakashi's team fought against Orokimaru they are stronger than you think. The Abarame disagreed with the tactical analysis but he wasn't in charge. As you say Lady Sunid, what should we do then? We wait until Kakashi signals that he needs us. Until then we stay hidden and avoid exposure. Guy gave a thumbs up, we will be ready to showcase our youth when they call. Tenzo silently agreed with his boisterous comrade. Kakashi Senpai had saved his life numerous times, he would return the favor if at all possible. Asterisk break asterisk. The weather was growing colder as Team 7 neared the border. Kakashi turned to his three pupils, are you ready? Hi Kakashi Sensei. Kakashi smiled underneath his mask as his team officially crossed over into the Land of Frost. Naruto created another 40 clones that scattered along the edges of the border. 
Team 7 quickly set up several shinobi traps. Relatively simple items, buried explosive tags that would be activated by pressure, a few tripwires and even something as mundane as a snare. Genjutsu was added to make them harder to detect. And then Team 7 hunkered down to wait. Naruto received memories of some pop clones. He grinned first blood had gone to Naruto. The Iwa shinobi that had been in Kumogaku had attacked a group of his clones. It was a group of five foolish chunin and they had been massacred by his clones. Only two clones had been defeated by Dotenjutsu that disrupted the earth to an extent that the crashing rocks had grazed the two clones. Shadow clones are great but they sure are fragile, Naruto thought to himself. He relayed the information to his team. His clones had less luck against the group of Jonin from Iwa. Kitsuki had attacked the group first using Doten, Dokubaku Earth Release, Underground Explosion. The earth between Kitsuki and the clones exploded in a line. All of the clones avoided serious injury however taking even a minor injury dissipated them. Two clones were down and Kitsuki followed up with Doten, Kengen no Jutsu Earth Release, Fist Rock Technique. His entire arm was covered in rock and it raced toward one of the clones at top speed. The Naruto clone ducked the blow and slashed out with his katana slicing deep into Kitsuki. Unfortunately for the Naruto clone his opponent was actually a rock clone that shattered into pieces when the blade struck and he was not able to avoid the debris. The last Naruto clone used futon, Shinkugyoku wind release vacuum bullets, but had it blocked by a hastily constructed mud wall. The Naruto clone raced forward and used Kawarimi to get behind the wall and fired another futon, Shinkugyoku wind release vacuum bullets, but again the mud wall came up and the clone ran out of chakra. Naruto informed his team, Kitsuki and the Iwajonin are about half a mile away. They might be rock and mud clones though. Kitsuki is really fast with his Doten Jutsu, be cautious. The team readied themselves while Naruto made some additional clones. However the Iwa Shinobi did not attack. A few hours stretched by and Kakashi said, him looks like they aren't that eager. They must be waiting for reinforcements. Head for the second position, Naruto leave some clones here. Sasuke grimaced. His senses were on the razor edge and he was dying to actually fight something. The waiting was killing him. Team 7 moved on to the next position and settled into wait. Kakashi had Sakura and himself take a quick power nap with firm instructions to wake them in two hours of if someone happened by. In those two hours nothing happened. As the team prepared to continue on Sasuke said, let's go on the offense then. Fight when we want to and not when they get around to doing it. Kakashi shook his head, that could be what they want. Their actions imply that they are waiting for reinforcements we all want to be fresh for when the Iwa kill teams arrive. They began traveling to their next suitable location when Naruto suddenly cursed. About an hour away we have about 50 Iwa shinobi heading our way. One matches the description of Han the Jinchuriki of the Five Tails. Kakashi's eye widened, dangerous be very careful if we engage him. He can at the minimum do a partial transformation. Sasuke grinned, finally some real action. Kakashi called a halt. All right we'll set up a defensive position here. We'll set up a normal trap and genjutsu formation. Sakura distribute the scrolls to Naruto's clones. Sasuke and I will each make a pair of cage bunshin to go with 30 Naruto clones. We'll hit the enemy using the fuenjutsu scrolls you've prepared Sakura. That should thin them out some. You three better give me a good account on which scrolls work best. I've spent hours and hours on these things so you better use them right, Sakura warned. Naruto created his 30 clones and they were each given a scroll by Sakura. She had a pair for the two Kakashi and two Sasuke clones as well. Kakashi gave final instructions, remember you are just clones, do as much damage as you can don't worry about survival. The clones headed out and team 7 settled into wait. Asterisk break asterisk. Juro Suzumari had split his forces. With him were 15 squads, the tip of the spear. He had sent another 15 squads toward the land of hot water. The rest of his army was nearby when he felt the tremors in the ground. I sensed a shinobi and then it disappeared. A shadow clone and then I heard four pairs of footsteps turn into 34. I pinpointed them and it looks like they have found us too. He quickly gave orders and readied his squads for battle. Signals were sent to the main bulk of his forces. He sent orders to the group who had gone toward the land of hot water to hold position to cut off any retreat. 
A third group of 15 squads would head north and encircle where the enemy truly was and the rest of the 200 shinobi would reinforce his spear tip. Juro didn't have long to wait as the enemy was heading for his 50 shinobi with good haste. His forces didn't have much rest but soldier pills meant all of them were at peak efficiency after their run. The first clones stopped at a ridge and Juro signaled the Iwa shinobi to blow it apart with Doton Jutsu. Half a dozen clones were dissipated when the ridge disappeared with earth and stone scattering all different directions. A few of the clones shielded themselves with futon, repusho, wind release, gale palm. The first squad that engaged after the Doton barrage threw kunai with explosive tags attached. In response prior to immediately striking a clone unfurled a scroll that thrust an extremely potent wind that blew away the incoming kunai. From within the scroll scores of kunai flashed back toward the first squad's position. A hastily used Doton, Doryuheiki, Earth Release, Mud Wall, was a fraction of a second too slow to stop the lead set of kunai. As a result one of the Chunin took a kunai that pierced straight through his flak vest and into his shoulder. Other squads began to engage while Juro analyzed the opponent's attacks. Han was about to go in but Juro held up his hand to hold him back. A Naruto clone used Shunshin to appear next to a squad. The squad had two Jonin and the clone was struck down in quick order. The clone had a katana in one hand that had been parried and in the other it was holding a scroll. As soon as the clone dissipated the scroll that was being held shut shot open and exploded with tremendous force. The blast was 20 times the size of a normal exploding tag and had metallic shrapnel included that severely injured one of the Jonin. This repeated itself once more with an explosion against another squad. And then a third kamikaze clone had a scroll that sprayed out acid that even ate through rock, to say nothing of what it did to flesh. Juro scowled and sent in the Jinchuriki. The scrolls were dangerous to his shinobi but not to someone like Han. He called out orders, use clones and long-range attacks to deal with them, avoid close combat. Steam flowed out of Han's armor as he charged in. A clone of the last Uchiha charged at the Jinchuriki of Iwa. The Sasuke clone flipped through hand signs and used, Raiten, Shichu Shibari, Lighting Release, Four Pillar Bind. Han however felt the chakra building up and put on an additional burst of speed and the attack missed. The Sasuke clone with its Sharingan enhanced vision was able to avoid the first two blows from his red armored opponent. Juro called out a warning to the left flank of his shinobi. The warning came just in time as a Kakashi clone burst out of the ground flinging kunai in all directions. The warning saved his comrades but didn't stop Kakashi from following up the surprise attack with a rush at the weakest opponent his Sharingan could perceive. A Chunin medical shinobi was quickly cut down as the Kakashi clone annihilated him in close combat before leaping away from a Doton, Doryuso, Earth Release, Earth Flow spears. More Naruto clones unleashed hails of kunai on the Iwa shinobi though they failed to do much damage now that they expected those types of attacks. Juro felt three clones go wide around to the right flank and he signaled them. A Naruto clone rushed in avoiding an earth dragon and several kunai. Ten feet away from the Iwa shinobi the clone unfurled his scroll and toxic gas flowed out toward his targets. The two extra Naruto clones both launched, Futon, Daytopper, Wind Release, Great Breakthrough, pushing the toxic gas into the middle of the formation. Meanwhile Han had just finished off the Sasuke clone whose only consolation prize was hitting the Jinchuriki with Katen, Gokaku no Jutsu, Fire Release, Great Fireball technique, that had done little to no damage. The Kakashi clone was eventually taken down by sheer numbers but not before fatally wounding another Chunin. A second Kakashi clone dissipated itself after using Raiten, Jaibashi Daino, Lightning Release, Massive electromagnetic murder, that let loose with a large area burst of lightning that severely wounded a dozen shinobi and outright killed three. To compound matters those severely wounded could not get out of the way of the toxic gas and a few more ended up falling prey to it. The Suzumari clan leader looked around in disgust. Nothing but clones and I've taken 30 casualties, a dozen of which are dead or two wounded to be of further service. To add to his annoyance he felt another 30 clones be created and were heading for their position. The bulk of his army was arriving and as of yet his targets had not left the current location. More clones are coming, this time be prepared for their tricks. Fresh squads are coming they will move past us and engage with our real enemies. Asterisk break asterisk. Kakashi looked at his team. We've got a bit of a problem. Juro Suzumari is the one hunting us. Naruto knew the name as he had memorized all the bingo books, 
he's the guy that can sense footsteps right. Kakashi nodded, he'll be hard to fool. Based on what my clone observed I believe there are a lot more enemies than we expected. I'm going to send the signal up for Sunid's squad to be ready to intervene. Kakashi threw a modified Katen Jutsu into the air that burned with red light. We are going to engage them here but be ready to retreat if I give the signal. Naruto prepared another 40 clones for battle and then made ready to use his summoning jutsu once the enemy was close by. Sakura went over the genjutsu she was planning on using in her head. Sasuke was ready to push himself. His clone had been defeated rather easily by the Jinchuriki. He wasn't going to allow for a repeat occurrence. The enemy was closing in and they had learned from the previous clash. They led the way with Han who could shrug off all but the most dangerous attacks and a variety of mud and rock clones. Naruto looked unnerved toward Kakashi, they will be here in minutes, and it's way more than 50. They have over 200 shinobi incoming. Kakashi was caught off guard by the sheer number. They must have really hated you sensei. Kakashi ordered a dozen of Naruto's clones to retreat south and make sure they had a clear path toward where their backup squad should be. And then the first wave of Iwa Shinobi was upon them. The first wave was made up of clones and they triggered most of the traps. Naruto bit his thumb and accessed the Kyubi Chakra. Kuchio's no jutsu. Summoning technique. A massive chakra cloud rose and as it cleared Gamabunta appeared. Naruto waved hello quickly before creating some distance to repeat his summoning twice more to summon the full complement of battle toads. Gamabunta asked, him who are we going to be fighting now kid? Naruto smiled, oh about 200 Iwa Shinobi. Opposite the battlefield the Iwa Shinobi saw the three massive toads appear. Juro signaled the Kuchio's summoning specialists to take action. Massive summons required enormous chakra reserves. Only rare shinobi could summon the likes of Manda or Gamabunta by themselves. For the Iwa Shinobi they had a team of three who had signed the bear contract and they each contributed their chakra to the summoning. Juro watched with satisfaction as Maru the bear king was summoned. The growl from his throat reverberated across the battlefield. This had better be good. The head summoner bowed, Maru-sama our foe is the heir of our greatest enemy. He has summoned the chief of Mount Myoboku. The great bear growled again. He stood on his hind legs the way the great toads did. Strapped across his back was a massive club almost as large as he was. His fur was black and coarse expect on his right shoulder where a large burn scar prevented it from growing. In a bestial but commanding voice he agreed, a worthy foe. The second group had four shinobi in it and they pulled their chakra together to summon Atratus the dark vulture. The creature was about half the size of Maru and the toads but it was also airborne which gave the four Iwa Shinobi a platform to rain down attacks from above. The vulture was also a master of genjutsu and could trap its targets in a nightmare world of death and entropy. Gamabunta went to face off against Maru. The Iwa Shinobi ripped apart the ground from beneath the three great toads with the Doten Jutsu. Off balance Gamabunta was barely able to catch the massive club in his hands before it smashed into his torso. Gamakin fell over and groaned, I told you I was clumsy. Gamahiro on the other hand pushed away from the Doton cracked ground and charged into the Iwa lines. Naruto clones raced over to Gamakin to protect him while he was off his feet. Other clones opened their scrolls and let loose barrages of high-speed kunai. The Iwa shinobi charged forward eager to kill the Namikas. The real Naruto drew his specially made katana and charged a trio of Iwa shinobi near him. The first attempted to dodge his strike but misjudged Naruto's full speed and was sliced in two. One of the two drew their own katana and lashed out while the other threw shuriken. Naruto deflected the shuriken, parried the first two attacks and then launched his own. The Iwa shinobi had his blade in a perfect block stance. Naruto pushed chakra into his blade as he struck instantly slicing through steel and dealing a mortal blow to his opponent. A samurai would have cried foul at the rather underhanded method of winning the Kenjutsu duel but to a shinobi winning through trickery was always appropriate. Before Naruto could deal with the third opponent a massive Doton, Dosekiru Earth Release, Stone Dragon, slammed into his position and required a quick retreat. Another followed in its wake and Naruto was hard pressed to get away. Suddenly the attack stopped as the Iwa shinobi cheered. Naruto saw an image of his own bloodied and dead body on the ground and silently thanked Sakura for her genjutsu. It didn't fool the Iwa shinobi long and after a couple of seconds the genjutsu was broken. Sakura however had two purposes for the genjutsu. 
Primarily it was to save Naruto however secondly it was to see who was resistant to Genjutsu and who was vulnerable. Sakura signaled Sasuke who blurred toward the Iwashinobi Sakura had pointed out. Sakura used an enhanced version of called Magen, Narakumi no Jutsu, demonic illusion, hell viewing technique to trap four Iwashinobi in an image of their worst nightmare. They died still trapped in that nightmare as Sasuke cut their throats. A dozen Iwashinobi went after Sasuke. All of them were at least Chunin rank and several were Jonin. Sasuke blocked a Taijutsu strike to his face, broke his opponent's wrist and then threw him in the direction Kunai and more Iwashinobi were charging in. Their view partially obscured by the flying shinobi, Sasuke sped through the hand seals for Katen, Gokaku no Jutsu, fire release, great fireball technique, and launched it at the charging Iwashinobi. If those were had been his only opponents it would have worked however a mud wall stopped the fireball in its tracks. Another Dotan user raised earth spears from the ground and Sasuke had to leap away. Mid-air he was the target of thrown kunai, several of which had exploding tags attached. Sasuke quickly used Kawarimi but not before one of the exploding tags detonated burning his left arm. Unsteady from the hit while in the midst of the substitution jutsu Sasuke stumbled and rolled to the ground. Standing up his Sharingan enhanced vision allowed a narrow dodge of a Ritsudo tensioned mud needle. A pair of Naruto clones took the heat off of him and allowed him to recover from the barrage of non-stop attacks. HNN I'm better than them but they are hitting me from too many directions I can't finish one off without leaving myself open. Kakashi saw everything going on with his Sharingan and was using the chaos to his advantage. Through skilled application of Shunshin, Kawarimi and his preternatural levels of stealth he was showing it were just why he was one of the legends of the Third Shinobi War. He had even fooled the Suzumari clan by taking a running leap in one direction, creating a mid-air cage bunshin, leaping off of said bunshin and letting the bunshin step where he would have. If was just me and him he probably could have sensed it but even he must be tasked with the hundreds of clones, jutsu and shinobi everywhere. Kakashi had executed a dozen iwa shinobi with practiced efficiency. Naruto's clones however were dying swiftly. Han was actively seeking out the real Naruto and the clones could do little to slow him down. Kakashi felt the beginnings of a genjutsu taking hold of him and was surprised by the sheer power of it. It was very likely that absent his Sharingan he would have succumbed to the momentary vision of his fleshing rotting away. Stupid bird, I guess summons don't read bingo books. The other unfortunate part of their situation was that they weren't killing their Iwa foes very fast. Gamakan had finally stood up but was battling multiple Jonin who were slowly wearing him down. Gamabunta wasn't losing his battle with Maru but he wasn't winning either. Gamma Hero was dealing with a pair of massive golems created with Doton, Goremu no Jutsu, Earth Release, Earth Golem Technique. Kakashi knew the battle was not going in their favor. Naruto summoned another batch of clones that were trying to hold back the tide but they didn't have time to pick up the Fuenjutsu scrolls that made them so much deadlier. Kakashi put on a burst of speed and knocked an Iwajonin away while dodging Earth Spears and Mud Bullets. He ended his sprint behind Maru and gathered chakra around his eye. The massive king of bears may have felt the chakra build up but he was too focused on his battle with the toad chief. Kamui was unleashed on the back of the gigantic summon. It began to twist him out of this world when he fought back with a snarl. This proved to be quite painful for Maru. Kamui exerted a force that was nearly impossible to hold back. The bear planted his feet in order to push off and away from the sudden force pulling him and that second was costly. Maru roared and with a triumphant surge leapt away from the pull, leaving behind huge chunks of his spine and flesh. The massive bear fell and moaned once before lying still. The scene shocked the Iwa Shinobi. Once a summoned creature became wounded enough they returned to their own land. But if one died outright there was no return, their corpse remained where it had fallen. Sharingan no Kakashi had just executed Iwa's greatest summon. The demoralizing impact was immediate. Kakashi signaled his team to retreat during the confusion. Not all of Iwa had stopped in its tracks at the site but enough had that Team 7 was able to disengage from their immediate opponents. Juro began giving orders as he charged toward Kakashi. He drew his Tanto and rushed Kakashi. After killing Maru, Kakashi had let out a burst of killing intent designed to further frighten and intimidate Juro's army. Juro knew he had to do something. Juro's ability to sense other shinobi through vibrations wasn't the only reason he was feared. Without weaving a single hand sign earth rose up around Kakashi who dodged away from it. 
Juro clashed Tanto against Kunai with Kakashi. The surrounding shinobi watched in awe as their duel began. A couple of shinobi tried to assist but Kakashi manipulated the battlefield in a way that they caused more harm than good. Kakashi held the edge in Taijutsu due to the Sharingan however Juro's use of the earth around to shield and attack almost rivaled the late Jinchuriki of the Ichibi. Nearby Gamabunta stomped a pair of Iwashinobi too slow in escaping the massive toad. Explosive tags rained around his eyes blinding him. Sharp earth spears thrust into his feet pricking him badly. Still slightly blind he lashed out with several sutan, tepidama, water release, gunshot one right after another. Kakashi's students withdrew, Naruto threw out clones who were using, futon, daytopper, wind release, great breakthrough, to slow down pursuit. For the most part it was effective. A few dogged Iwa shinobi were able to go underground with the Dotan abilities but most couldn't handle gale force winds and match the speed of Team 7. The exception of course was Han who shot steam out of his armor and ignored the futon jutsu like it wasn't even there. Sakura attempted a genjutsu but Han shrugged it off. Naruto threw one of his chakra-enhanced kunai but Han chose to dodge that one even though he ignored all the other thrown projectiles he had been subject to. Naruto looked worriedly at his companions, this wasn't good. Their opponents seemed indomitable and intelligent. Naruto's worries were disrupted by his body suddenly stumbling. As he looked on with horror he saw his skin turning dark and flaking away. Sakura and Sasuke had seen Naruto fall and Sakura shouted, Genjutsu. It's the bird. Sakura and Sasuke skidded to a halt and raced back the other way. The Iwa shinobi in the air rained down projectiles at the paralyzed foe. Sasuke was too far away to intercept them so he threw kunai and shuriken to deflect them. Even with his advanced sight he couldn't stop every single one and Sakura cried out as a kunai buried itself into Naruto's calf. Sakura slid next to Naruto and forcefully disrupted the genjutsu with her own chakra. The illusion broke and Naruto felt the pain in his calf. Naruto tried to stand and the leg buckled under him. Han had cleared the clones and was now right on top of them. Sakura helped Naruto get to his feet. Sasuke saw Han approach and cursed. The Uchiha gathered chakra into his hand and the sound of birds filled the air. Han was unimpressed and charged forward. Sasuke ran towards him and when he was within 10 feet he pushed the chakra forward using Chidori Iso, Chidori Sharp Spear. The lance of pure lightning chakra caught the Jinchuriki off guard and he wasn't fully able to get out of the way. The lightning pierced his armor along the shoulder eliciting a grunt of pain, the first vocal sounds he had made during the battle. The jutsu was spent and Sasuke wasted no time in pressing his advantage. Sasuke attacked Han in close quarters with a kunai. Han was injured and only had one arm available to him. This meant the fight was more or less equal as the more experienced and stronger shinobi was pushed back by the Sharingan and his injuries. Sasuke attempted a killing blow but his opponent was quite resilient despite getting cut and stabbed the Sasuke, kunai. Naruto made some more clones to try to deal with the other Iwa pursuers on the ground however they would all also have his wounded leg. They would be hampered but they were better than nothing. Sakura hastily handed out more sealed scrolls. A few clones aimed their massed kunai scrolls upwards toward the dark vulture however the creature flapped its wings and the kunai were swept away. Sasuke's battle took a turn for the worse when he got in too close to Han who did something with his armor that blasted superheated steam out. Sasuke's Sharingan saw the steam erupt and tried to flinch back but he wasn't fast enough and was scalded badly. Han exploited his advantage to go in for the kill only for Naruto to lash out with a futon, daytopper, wind release, great breakthrough. Han was unmovable as ever however Sasuke was not and he flew away from the potentially lethal steam enhanced punch. Naruto saw Sasuke recover in mid-air and land safely and looked at Sakura, time to let the cat, or in this case the fox out of the bag. Sakura rolled her eyes at the bad joke but nodded in agreement. By accessing the QB chakra it would heal his leg and give them a fighting chance. Naruto wasted no time in pulling the nine-tailed chakra into his body and soon his body was surrounded by tainted chakra. His birthmarks grew thicker and his eyes slowly turned red. In an instant every shinobi worth their salt in a 10-mile radius felt the chakra of a tailed beast. Han's eyes widened in surprise. He had not been aware he was fighting another of his kind. The Iwa shinobi including Juro were shocked. Was this the reason that the Kanoa shinobi were so confident? That the Namikas had a Jinchuriki bodyguard? 
Juro was trying to process the weight of the Kanoa Jinchuriki through the earth when Kakashi released a scroll that nearly killed him when it exploded with devastating power. Quick reflexes and a chakra-hardened earth dome saved his life and he sensed Kakashi rush toward the demonic chakra. Juro got back to his feet slowly, his muscles and chakra were drained. For all his skill he knew he wasn't as powerful as Kakashi. He had managed a draw for a short period of time against the legendary Kanoa Shinobi however if it had gone on longer he would have lost. Naturally Juro had known this and had been prepared to withdraw while multiple Jonan covered his retreat, in the meantime it would further deplete Kakashi's chakra and stamina. Juro watched Kakashi speed through his allies using the great battle toads as cover. Some had tried to stop him but were unsuccessful, only Kakashi's single-minded purpose had prevented some of them from suffering death. Juro received reports from his squads. The shinobi he had sent north had rendezvoused with Kitsuki and would arrive soon. The shinobi in the south under the command of Sanami were moving to cut off the retreat of Team 7. However Team 7 had now been tied up by Han and the leading elements of the pursuit teams. Even though they had suffered a devastating blow with the loss of Maru they were in a good position to win the battle. Kakashi did not have infinite reserves and whatever that jutsu was that allowed him to kill the great bear had taken enormous amounts of chakra. The three battle toads were also all wounded to one degree or another and the large toad wielding the Sasumata had already returned back to his home. Gamabunta was a problem but blood covered his lower legs and feet as Doten Jutsu after Doten Jutsu ripped up from the ground to assault him. It would not be long before he fell too. Gamma Hero had dispatched the rock golems but was having difficulty peeling off a trio of Jonan who had leapt atop him and started stabbing into his body. Juro was glad he had planned for the possibility of the toads being summoned. Kitsuki and the northern contingent would arrive soon as well. With fresh troops they would surround and eliminate the four shinobi they were hunting. Kakashi you are the mighty dragon that will be brought down by the swarm of ants. You will not be able to protect the Namikas. This is where your legend ends. Asterisk break asterisk. Sunid's squad had seen the red flare-like jutsu fired by Kakashi and had started to move stealthily and silently toward the predetermined retreat point for Team 7. When they suddenly sensed the QB's chakra flare up they abandoned all pretense of stealth and ran at top speed toward the chakra. Shibi quickly launched a messenger hawk to the secondary support squad in the land of hot water. It would take them at least half a day to arrive. Shibi didn't know of the disposition of Team 7 however if they could pull off a fighting retreat the additional Kanoa Shinobi could swing the tide. The Abarame was deeply worried about what had transpired. Naruto using the QB chakra was a signal something had gone wrong. After using a significant amount of QB chakra Naruto was almost always completely drained of his normal chakra. It was not something that was to be used if there was another choice, Naruto's stamina and ability to keep creating clones had been key to a number of strategies Kakashi and Shikaku had devised. The others were also worried. Guy's eternal rival was fighting for his life as were a number of his most youthful genin. He had the urge to rush ahead of the rest of the squad but soon it had been clear that wasn't going to be in the cards. As it was he was pushing at a pace that only soon it could keep up for any length of time. Sunid was over her fear of blood but this would be a true test of her abilities. The few missions she had gone on had not been anywhere close to being able to test the skills of a Sanin. She knew that Kakashi's scheme had been allowed to go through partially because of the trust Jiraiya and the village had in her abilities. She hoped that trust had not been misplaced. Tenzo didn't have the doubts Sunid had about her abilities. This was an opportunity to use Mokuten would release on a grand scale. The Shodai's legacy was going to be put on display he was going to make Kakashi Senpai proud. Naruto was surrounded and filled with the toxic chakra. He could feel it like fire on his skin and while it did hurt he could feel power pulsing throughout his body. With a growl he flashed forward toward the rival Jinchuriki. Naruto's blade struck with thunderous force against Han's armored forearm. The blade slashed through the armor itself but was blunted by the steam that circulated within the armor. The steam was solid chakra and it prevented Naruto's attack from slicing off Han's arm. The steam however did not stop momentum and since it would not be sliced through the momentum pushed the seemingly immovable Han off his feet. The blow sent him careening back 50 feet. The Iwa Shinobi were stunned as they watched their Jinchuriki go flying. Naruto wasted no time in blazing forward and killing one with a slice through the torso and another with a bone shattering kick. 
Sasuke had first and second degree burns on his face from the steam but he also ruthlessly sprang into action striking at the surprised Iwa Shinobi. He managed to kill one before the others began to defend themselves appropriately. The sudden reversal in the battle was only a brief respite as Han returned to the scene. Naruto felt hatred well up in him and he had to force it down lest he lose control of the fox's chakra. Taking a few moments to find his center again let Han close the distance once more. Despite the seemingly bulky armor Han was viciously fast. His first assault on Naruto was only dodged by inches. Naruto kicked out and knocked the other Jinchuriki away. Steam billowed all around Han as he clashed again with Naruto. The chakra cloak that surrounded Naruto prevented the steam from harming him as the two clashed. Sasuke waited for his opportunity to strike and jumped in on the first opportunity. Naruto had driven Han backwards with cross slash and Han totted backward before regaining his balance. In that split second Sasuke slammed his Chidori into Han's back. Han was hurled forward from the piercing strike but like Naruto's wind-infused katana it did not pierce the steam. Han's armor was starting to become shredded. The steam no longer contained within the armor was fast becoming depleted. Soon it would be completely depleted and he would be vulnerable. However Han was a Jinchuriki, the container of a tailed beast. His power was not just his armor, his strength, stamina or jutsu. It was the raging fury of the Gobi. Raw chakra emanated from him. Han's armor cracked and with little warning exploded outward. Pure force pushed Naruto and Sasuke away. Sasuke was blown off his feet but quickly used Kawarimi to get back safely to the ground. The ground beneath Han resembled a crater. Han emerged covered in red and black chakra looking bestial. The only thing that still identified the creature as Han was his kasa hat and the five tails that had risen from his backside. Naruto wasted no time and immediately tried to decapitate his opponent. Han raised his hand and caught the blade despite the cutting power of the wind chakra that coated it. Han let out a roar and slashed Naruto with his other clawed hand. Naruto's eyes could barely see the quick swipe, in an instant he let go of his katana and leapt backwards. The claw missed Naruto but the massive power behind the blow actually ripped the air around him and shoved him back even further. Immediately the chakra monster pounced toward Naruto who shoved a Raisingen upward as his opponent descended on him. The QB infused Raisingen met the demonic chakra and forced it back. Han let out another roar as he was slammed backwards and away from his prey. Naruto panted heavily the chakra around him fluctuated wildly, the second tail of QB chakra was on the verge of dissipating. Another score of Iwa Shinobi had now caught up and more were arriving rapidly. Doten Jutsu started being launched towards Team 7. Sakura had a flash of insight and weaved a Genjutsu over Han. Han had been seemingly impervious to Genjutsu previously but now he was much more bestial and far less in control of his chakra. Sakura kept things simple. She simply changed where Naruto appeared to be. As Han rose the Naruto he had been fighting disappeared and reappeared behind him. Han let a roar and charged at the illusionary Naruto. Sakura grimly smiled as the Iwa Shinobi tasted the wrath of their own Jinchuriki. Han ripped apart an Iwa Chunin before the illusion rippled and broke. Han was filled with bloodlust and sensed he had been tricked. Pushing Chakra through his entire being he roared again sending concussive sound waves in all directions. Sakura's Genjutsu was torn asunder and she fell to one knee as the backlash of demonic Chakra shredded her own Chakra-infused illusion. Han rounded on Naruto again and Sakura forced herself to stand. She quickly leapt away as the ground beneath her erupted into earth spears. Where are you Kakashi? Asterisk break asterisk. Sanami was standing by ready in case the little Namika's brat managed to get away from Juro's forces. Come on run you little prick let me have some action. Sanami was idly daydreaming about getting the killing blow off on Minato's child as well as his student when one of her sensor specialists reported in. Four Kanoa Shinobi are heading in this direction. The man swallowed heavily, one of them is Sunid Senju. Sanami's head snapped up in surprise. Send word to Juro now. In a louder voice she addressed her subordinates, one of the Sanin is inbound. But there is only one of her. We will bury her. She snapped out orders to a pair of Kuchio's summoning specialists who drew blood and completed their summoning. Each had summoned a massive ten-foot-tall goat that soon on its hind legs. They wore coverings that looked similar to a Chunin vest and each had a massive battle axe in their hands. Sanami knew that one blow from those axes could kill pretty much anyone even a Sanin. 
Of course actually hitting an elite shinobi was far easier said than done and the summons would have a hard time hitting even an average John and let alone the legendary slug princess. The sensor shinobi shouted again, they'll be on us in less than a minute. The two goat summons took their positions on the front line along with a variety of mud clones. Sanami had no weapons in her hands. Unlike the futon uses in Kei's no Kuni, Land of Wind, Sanami did not use a war fan of any variety. Her hands were free to flip through hand signs needed to use any futon jutsu in her repertoire. You might not be Namikas or Hitaki but you'll do just as well. Asterisk break asterisk. Sunid and Guy were in the front of the formation and spotted the Iwa Shinobi. With a shout Guy put on a burst of speed and slammed into the first mud clone. The clone didn't even have time to defend itself from the thunderous kick that obliterated it. Guy dashed toward his next opponent who was one of the summoned goats. The goat brayed and slashed horizontally. The swipe completely missed the speedy green clad shinobi. Guy snapped the goat's kneecap before punching through another clone. Guy felt the earth rumble beneath him and neatly avoided the doton, dosekiru earth style, earth dragon. The wounded goat struck out forcing Guy to leap away. The Iwa shinobi worked together to try to box him in throwing kunai, doton jutsu and more clones at him. While they tried to contain, Kanoa's noble green beast, the rest of the backup squad arrived. Sanami had not attacked Guy instead she had preserved her chakra for what she saw as the true feat. As soon as she spotted Sunid she cried out, Senpu Kyoheiki, whirlwind wall. Two tornadoes slammed down near Sunid. Sunid saw the winds rip up the dirt with slashing power and pushed chakra into her feet to leap over the jutsu. Sanami saw her jump over the tornadoes she had created and focused her chakra on the destructive wind. Her existing jutsu stopped their forward advance and rushed toward the Sanin again. Sunid narrowed her eyes and rushed into combat with other Iwa Shinobi. If the wind user wanted to chase her with it she would have to go through her own comrades. Tenzo was the next to enter the battle. Tenzo used his Mokuten wood release to stop projectiles headed for him and his comrades. One of the goat summons tried to tear apart the wooden wall he had created. The axe bit into the wall damaging it however the experienced Anbu manipulated his Kekei Genkai to grow wooden lances out of the wall that pierced into the large summon. The wounded creature thrashed and Tenzo closed his fist forcing more chakra into the technique. The branches inside the creature continued to grow but now in all directions, piercing vital organs and ultimately killing the creature. Shibi was the last to arrive and hung in the back. This did not go unnoticed and one of Iwa Jonan used Doton, Shinju Zanshu no Jutsu Earth Style, Headhunter Jutsu and attempted to trap him in the earth. Shibi darted to the side and avoided the man's attack. The Jonan palmed a kunai and then stabbed the Abaram in the chest. The Jonan's grin turned into horror as the body dissipated into a swarm of Kikaichu. The real Shibi watched as his insects feasted on his foe's chakra. However he was a Jonan and so it wasn't quite as simple as that. The Jonan used a shunshun to try to blow off the Kikaichu with speed. He was partially successful as he was able to push away a large amount of the creatures. Feeling his chakra still being leached out he did it again and again. Now most of the bugs were off of him but they weren't dead and they continued to swarm after him. Finally the Iwa Shinobi set off an explosive tag near his body and blew the majority away while doing minor injury to himself. Shibi again sent the swarm after him and the Jonan threw kunai with explosive tags into the heart of them to thin their numbers. After tagging several he rushed at Shibi. This time he threw Shuriken to see if it was a bug clone or not. Shibi deflected them with his kunai and the Iwa Jonan grinned as he closed in. Abarame were horrible at close combat. An explosive tag detonated right under his foot blowing half of it off. As the Jonan tumbled to the ground Shibi darted forward and thrust his kunai into the back of the Iwa Shinobi's neck. What Shibi's opponent had not realized was that the Kikaichu could do more than just become a clone or devour chakra. They could also be used to deliver small items through the disrupted earth of his doton, Shinju Zanshu no Jutsu, earth style, headhunter Jutsu. Shibi had known his opponent would try to get into close combat so he had sent his allies into the ground and planted explosive seals. Unless the Jonan leapt the final 20 feet his path would go right over the explosive notes. Shibi wiped clean his kunai and hurried to where the rest of his squad was fighting. Guy had yet to open up the gates but his speed and taijutsu prowess made his, a, rank a joke. Guy dodged and killed with ruthless proficiency.
An Iwa Taijutsu specialist fought Guy to a momentary standstill for all of five seconds since Guy was forced to dodge mud rivers, kunai and earth spears. Pivoting smoothly to avoid the latest Dotan attack Guy shattered his opponent's arm with his kick. It wasn't just his technique and speed it was also the sheer power behind his blows that made him so dangerous. Kakashi had chosen to give his team's training weights for a reason, he had seen just how effective they could be. Sanami was tempted to keep the tornadoes going as soon it rushed into an Iwa squad but without a powerful plan to protect her it was dangerous to unleash attacks on her own side. She ended the jutsu and glanced at how the rest of the battle was going. She bit back a curse as she saw the Leafs premier taijutsu specialist carve through her forces like a hot knife through butter. Sanami like most elite jonin studied bingo books and so she knew the name Maito Gai. Their latest intelligence had him training a trio of Genin not partnered with Sunid of the Sanin. Added to that a Mokuten would release user. Sanami saw Sunid pulverize a Chunin too slow to get out of the way. Sanami inhaled sharply and then expelled her jutsu. Futon, Shinku Gyoku wind release vacuum bullets raced towards Sunid who contorted out of their way save for one which clipped her shoulder. Sanami grinned at drawing blood and flipped though the hand signs of her next jutsu. Meanwhile Sunid ignored the wound and lashed out with a vicious kick to a long-haired Iwa Kanoiki who desperately dodged away from the blow. Flashing through the hand seals Sanami used Futon, Uchikubi Ritapu wind release, wind decapitation. The razor-edged wind was aimed for Sunid's torso. The Sanan ducked underneath it and then slammed her fist into the ground sending a shockwave in all directions. More worrisome was the cloud of dust it kicked up that obscured the deadly S-class Nin from view. Sanami blew the dust away with Futon, Daytopper, wind release, great breakthrough. As the dust was cleared Sanami saw Sunid use a knife hand strike to another Iwa Shinobi's chest. Chakra flashed with the blow as the man's chest cavity collapsed. Sanami prepared another jutsu but saw a cloud of insects swarm for her. She allowed them to get close before using Futon, Repusho, wind release, gale palm, to push them away. Despite using multiple jutsu in a short time span the elite Jonin was not tired. Her mastery of the futon element allowed her to use far less chakra with her attacks than most ninjutsu specialists. Sanami took stock of the battlefield again. Guy and Sunid were demolishing the squads assigned to her. The Mokuten would release user was using his keke genkai to shield himself and his squad preventing her forces from taking full advantage of the numerical disparity. Sanami had to fast the fact she was losing. She tapped the ground in a preset set number of times. The message was for Juro who could sense it, strong opposition, failure possible. The battle paused for a moment as a second wave demonic chakra assaulted their senses. Asterisk break asterisk. Juro watched as the last battle toad returned to its home. Kitsuki had just arrived along with the northern squads he had dispatched. Juro bowed and said, I am glad to find you well Kitsuki-sama. Kitsuki nodded his head, how is the battle going? Juro made his report, after the initial clash they soon retreated. Our superior numbers are wearing them down. It turns out that the Namikas is also the demon container of the nine-tailed fox. Kitsuki's eyebrows raised that news. So that is what I sensed, it felt different than Han. Juro continued, Kakashi was able to deal with Maru-sama and his loss is felt keenly. Suzumari allowed a moment of silence for one of the great symbols of Iwa's strength. Our southern forces have encountered heavy resistance. Team 7's flight has been arrested but we must move quickly or they could still escape. A fresh wave of demonic chakra was sensed by both of the elite Jonin. Kitsuki asked, and Kakashi. Has he been wounded? Juro shook his head, no but he has used a lot of chakra. He has a dojutsu that killed Maru. It distorts space around someone and exerts tremendous force. If you feel chakra being gathered in his eye, move away immediately. Kitsuki was glad of the warning. Unless Han was also able to deal with Kakashi it would likely fall on Juro and himself to defeat Sharingan no Kakashi. Without further word both sprang forward with a shunshun ready to finish the Namikas before he could escape to the south. Asterisk break asterisk. Kakashi made his presence known by slashing through the spine of an Iwa Shinobi trying to attack his pink-haired student with a Dotan Jutsu. He saw Han's Jinchuriki form and knew Naruto hadn't progressed far enough with using the Kyubi Chakra to match it. Kakashi wasn't sure if he could even match Gobi in this form. That certainly wouldn't stop him from trying though. Kakashi intercepted Han's charge with a vicious kick to the creature's face. 
Kakashi didn't have the pure power of Sunid but it had all the force behind it that one would expect it to have coming from an S-class Nin. The Jinchuriki's charge was halted as the momentum slammed him perpendicular to his original course. Han flipped up with beast-like agility and roared at the newcomer who had gotten between him and his prey. During the roar Kakashi used that time to employ Raiten, Shichu Shibari, lighting release, four pillar bind to capture the creature. Han roared and the waves of chakra nearly destroyed the prison by its own. Kakashi knew his jutsu wouldn't hold his opponent for long and quickly launched himself forward and pulled lightning chakra into his hand. Reikiri had even more piercing power than Chidori. The Jinchuriki broke free right as the Reikiri struck the dark chakra coating him. The lightning was an unstoppable force that was smashing into an impenetrable defense. The instant the clash occurred Kakashi knew it would not do the job however the chakra cloak dimmed slightly as it worked to defend its host's body. Kakashi withdrew his hand and stabbed down with his kunai. He was always aware of his surroundings and so after the first stab he felt the projectiles racing toward him from nearby Iwashinobi. Dodging them give the five-tailed beast time to right itself. While this was going on Naruto saw an opportunity to go after easier targets while his sensei dealt with the largest threat. Naruto's speed and power were magnified with the QB chakra allowing him to surpass all but the most elite Jonin. When he crashed into a Chunin squad they died in moments. When Naruto normally killed he regretted it but hid his feelings under the cool balm of logic that said he was protecting his village and in the long run was saving more lives. Infused with the QB chakra he instead laughed as his enemies screamed. Sakura felt sick to her stomach seeing it but forced herself to focus on the fight. Naruto was Naruto, when he touched the demonic chakra he changed but once that horrible red haze left he would still be the boy who dreamed of being Hokage. I have to believe that. Sakura for her part took advantage of the situation to bring on another genjutsu that tricked an Iwa Shinobi into seeing her allies as more leaf shinobi. She managed to kill a comrade with an explosive tag before her squad mates tried to get close enough to disrupt the chakra of the now obvious genjutsu. Sasuke was battered but quickly took advantage of the situation to strike out at the distracted shinobi securing an additional kill and then crippling another shinobi with a rib-shattering kick. Squads of Iwa shinobi had become intermingled in the battle and now were not nearly as coordinated as they had been earlier. Team 7 dominated their opponents in the chaos. Naruto retained the presence of mind to use the summoning jutsu to bring in Gama. The Valiant Toad was not the size of the great battle toads but could handle himself just fine in a fight. The momentary advantage had cost the Rock Nin dearly but it was disrupted as more and more Iwa Shinobi flooded the area. Many of which were mostly intact and began to chain Doten Jutsu, flying kunai and other attacks at Team 7. Sasuke retreated under the barrage while covering Sakura. Naruto flew into the fresh troops with a bloodlust that shocked his allies and his foes. Kakashi was now breathing heavily as he tried to keep Han away from Naruto. If it had been a normal opponent of flesh and blood Kakashi would have been the victor six times over. Despite the Jinchuriki's raw power Kakashi moved sinuously around his opponent and never suffered a direct hit. Yet progress wasn't occurring and the bulk of the Iwa forces were arriving. Kakashi knew that with them would be Suzumari. Kakashi wasn't ready to use Kamui again so quickly. Using it a second time and adding all the other jutsu he had used in quick succession would drain all of his reserves. Kakashi ducked another powerful slash and kicked off of hand just as a pair of kunai slammed into the ground. Sunid's squad better get here fast. Asterisk break asterisk. When Sunid felt the second wave of demonic chakra she knew that Kakashi's group was probably facing Han of the steam armor. Sunid ducked an attack and countered with a destructive axe kick. Things were going very well here but they were running out of time. Guy run ahead and assist we'll finish here. Guy quickly gave her a thumbs up and activated the gates becoming a blur as he raced across the countryside. Sanami moved to intercept but a wall of plant growth rose up in front of her and she had to dodge the piercing branches. The futon specialist watched as Sunid continued to wreak havoc. She cursed at the situation, one of the Sanan wouldn't fall to normal tactics. She ordered three of the Jonin to break off their attack and come to her side while a Chunin created a mud wall between them and any of their opponents. This isn't working. Do any of you have a Katen Jutsu? One of the Jonins indicated they did. Good here is the plan. You two create mud clones and appear from beneath her. Wrap as many explosive tags as you have left on those clones and have them detonate as soon it hits them. After getting hit with the explosion she'll be vulnerable we'll then destroy her with my wind and your fire. 
Remember she's a damned Sanon so don't let up. The plan took a few moments to put in motion as they wrapped the mud clones with explosive tags. In the meantime soon it had dealt death to another three shinobi. The mud clones disappeared under the earth and reappeared underneath Sunid who dodged out of the way and counted with a vicious kick to the clone's torso. The clone detonated damaging Sunid's leg and throwing her backwards. Immediately Sanami used Futon, Daytopper, Wind Release, Great Breakthrough while her ally used a Katen Jutsu to add fire to their combination attack aimed at where Sunid had fallen. Despite the wounded leg Sunid used her chakra to push herself away from the massive inferno. An Iwajonan attacked her in mid-air. Despite her injuries it was foolish for any shinobi to willingly get close to Sunid. Sunid blocked the kunai held arm with enough strength to shatter bones. As the Iwanin gave a cry of pain Sunid used her other chakra laced hand to hit him in the forehead, instantly cracking his skull and sending him falling to the ground. Earth spears lanced up to kill her as she fell and Sunid punched downward with her chakra strength destroying the sharp landing zone. Trees grew all around her shielding her from an additional attack. Sunid took stock of her wounds and realized they would hamper her if she didn't fix them. In the moment of respite that Tenzo's wooden shelter provided the Sanon released her Byakugo no in strength of a hundred seal. Her violet forehead marking increased in size and now framed her face. Using Sozo Sisate mitotic regeneration, she healed the damage done to her shredded leg and other wounds. A fiery inferno smashed into the wooden dome and pushed through it. Sunid leapt through the flames allowing her regeneration to heal the burn wounds and lashed out with a devastating punch to the wind user. Sanami's eyes widened in surprise as a nearly unharmed Sunid burst through the flames and launched a blindingly fast punch to her chest. Sanami desperately dodged but wasn't quick enough and was struck with a glancing blow to her shoulder. That glancing blow dislocated her shoulder and threw her back a fair distance. Sunid whipped around and kicked out at the Iwajonan who had used the Katen Jutsu. The Jonan had more time to react than Sanami had and danced backward and swiftly used the substitution jutsu to get some distance away from the angry Kanoiki. Sanami struggled to stand and did so with the help of an Iwachunan. Tenzo lashed out with wood grown from his own hand at the wounded enemy commander. The Iwachunan attempted to slice through the wood however it was coated with Tenzo's chakra making the attempt useless. Sanami rolled to the side and sucked in air while she did so. Releasing her chakra she exhaled out using futon, shinku gyoku, wind release vacuum bullets. Tenzo shielded himself with a wood barrier. The air bullets plinked into the barrier and failed to get through. A cloud of insects swarmed over the chunan with Sanami and she could do nothing about it. A wind jutsu would hurt her comrade and she couldn't take her eye off of Tenzo either. Forty of her shinobi were dead or too injured to continue fighting. She hated herself for doing so but she tapped the ground signaling Juro that her position was critical and immediate assistance was needed or failure was imminent. Asterisk break asterisk. Guy burst onto the scene with a cry of Dynamiku Entori, dynamic entry. His flying kick snapped the neck of an Iwa Chunan. Just as the Iwa Shinobi had been turning the tide a new threat had emerged. Maito was currently using the gate of pain making his blows multiple times stronger than before. His reddish skin caused his form to blur in a combination of red and green as he massacred the other members of the Chunin squad. A Doton, Dosekiru, Earth Style, Earth Dragon, swept down at him just as a Doton, Doryuso, Earth Release, Earth Flow Spears, ripped the ground beneath him in order to impale him. Guy jumped into the air to avoid the Earth and Spears and used a spinning back kick to annihilate the Earth Dragon. Guy landed and raced toward another group of Iwa Shinobi. An Iwa Jonan created a pair of mud clones and intercepted the leaf Jonan in an attempt to save the Chunan in his squad. In a matter of seconds the mud clones were gone and Guy has given the Iwa Jonan a nasty blow to the leg. Before Guy could finish him off another earth dragon careened toward him and he had to break off his attack to dodge the jutsu. Not allowing his momentum to suffer Guy pivoted toward a new opponent who was trying to attack Sakura. Guy's knee to the side pulverized the man's ribs. Guy stopped his assault when he noticed Naruto's chakra flickering wildly. Naruto had dived into the middle of the enemy formation and despite his increased speed and power he was being overwhelmed by the attacks against him. Adotan, Doru Tiger, Earth Release, Earth Flow River, had succeeded in covering him with mud. With his enhanced chakra he burst free only to take a number of explosive tags to the face. Naruto's chakra level dimmed and his second tail dissipated, leaving one remaining tail. Guy sped onto the scene pausing only to kick a Jonan attacking the Toad Gama. 
The Jonan managed to block the blow with two forearms which led to microfractures in those bones. Gama was quick to capitalize on the attack and used the opening to wrap his long tongue around the enemy and bashed him against another Iwashinobi. Guy ripped through a wall of earth that attempted to slow his charge and landed next to Naruto clearing a space and allowed him to retreat. Sasuke used the last of his explosive tags to help create some distance. Naruto thanked Guy for the assistance. Sakura shouted to Naruto, get some clones out it's time for the downpour. Naruto nodded and swiftly made 30 clones. Sakura hastily unsealed a number of scrolls with a blue ribbon attached to each of them. The elite Jonan didn't know what Kakashi's youthful squad was planning but it probably involved some preparation so he quickly launched himself back at the Iwa forces. Despite the sudden arrival of another dangerous opponent from the Leith the Iwa spirits were lifted when their own reinforcements arrived. Sixty fresh shinobi along with Kitsuki and Juro were now on the battlefield. Asterisk break. Juro arrived on the scene and analyzed the battle in an instant. The Namikas was a Jinchuriki whose chakra was quickly fading. He would not be able to maintain his chakra cloak for long. The Uchiha only had superficial, if painful wounds however he also looked running low on stamina. The pink-haired girl that intelligence had listed as Sakura Haruno seemed to be the least injured and had stayed in the rear of her team's formation as support. Kakashi was unwounded but obviously on the edge of his reserves. Juro had not worked with Han before so he did not know how long the Jinchuriki would be able to maintain his current form. The newcomer on the battlefield was the Green Beast of Kanoa. Juro knew that after today, assuming the man survived, it was bingo books would be updated to indicate Guy's S-rank status. Juro had also felt the second signal from Sanami that indicated her position was almost overrun. Allowing a potential avenue for escape was unacceptable. Juro gave his orders, 20 shinobi were to go with Atratus, Dark Vulture Summon, and delay Sunid of the Sanin as long as possible. Juro's mission parameters were direct, do whatever was necessary to kill the Namikas. If they had to kill him and then retreat that would be good enough. Suzumari sent another of the five fresh squads to flank Team 7 and complete the encirclement. Kitsuki created clones and sent them to help Han against Kakashi. The real Kitsuki went to confront Guy. Juro held back and watched with curiosity as the freshly created Naruto clones each opened up a scroll that sent a deluge of water gushing out. The Fuenjutsu scrolls were not the typical storage scrolls. They must have been modified as water continued pouring out of the scrolls in significant quantities. What are you planning? Juro pondered as he watched the unfolding battle. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.